All right, how's everybody? So today we're talking about soups. I said soup, there it is. I said soup, there it is. I love this of soup. Um, so we talked about stocks, we talked about sauces. Um, so stocks is your foundation for your soups and your sauces, all right? Um, so we talked about our five mother sauces, which is Beth V, so bechamel, espanol, tomato, hollandaise, and velouté, all right? So one of the bases for soups is a velouté. Um, so think about if you're going to make a cream of broccoli soup, you're going to take some onions, um, maybe a little garlic. You're going to sweat those uh, in some oil. You're going to add some flour. You're going to sange some flour to dust, right? And you're going to make a compound roux. You're going to add your stock. You're going to add your broccoli. You're going to let it cook. And then you're going to puree. And then you add whatever other, other ingredients. But the base of that is a velouté. It's a roux and a white stock. Um, think of a bechamel uh, anytime. That could be a base for a soup also. So those two, sauce, those two sauces are great bases for your soups. Uh, I want you to be very aware of that. Now your tomato, I can do a cream of tomato soup. Um, so there's always kind of things that you can really play with. Um, but I wanted you to be very aware. So soups, when you're, when you're looking at soups, um, we're going to talk about a consomme. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, a lot of different things. But there's a couple different categories for soups. And usually there's a clear soup. Okay. So think about your broths, your consomme. Um, and a consomme is a clear, uh, fat-free broth. All right. Um, and I'll talk about the components and everything to it. A lot of, it's a very technical base soup. Um, to me, I say if you can make a hollandaise and you can make a, a consomme, you can do anything, right? Because they are, they're very technical based. Um, so you have clear, so you have your different classifications. You have a clear soup, right? You have a thick soup. So think of your cream soups or your pureed soups. Think of it like a, a, a cream of asparagus soup or a cream of broccoli. They're your kind of a thicker um Think of a uh, cream of tomato. Uh, what are you going to do? You're going to do a, a shrimp bisque, um, mulligatawny. You're going to do that when you get into class. That's a little thicker. Um, think of like a, yeah, those are your, your pureed soups. But let's say you wanted to do a butternut squash, a creamy butternut squash soup. Um, it's a pureed soup. Uh, so anything that you your base is, is having to be pureed, um, asparagus, carrot, butternut squash, sweet potato, uh, any, think of a, a loaded baked potato soup. Um, it's being pureed. Uh, so those are those soups. Then you have a bisque. A bisque is a shellfish uh, soup. So it has to have a shellfish stock to it to be a, a true bisque. Um, but you'll see like, I, and, and I've done it, a cream of mushroom uh, bisque. Uh, sounds better than a cream of mushroom soup um, and I can charge 25 cents more um, and but it sounds a lot more elegant right so then you have your chowders so you have a clam chowder or a um, shrimp chowder something like that uh, so think of chowder uh, and there you're going to have your potatoes and your clams and your your uh, shellfish and uh, all of that. So um, those are your different classifications. So you have a clear, a bisque, a thick, and a chowder, okay? But you can also put a corn chowder in there if you wanted to. Um, and then you have cold soups. So cold soups, you know what, we're coming into spring. You could do a, a cold watermelon soup or a cold cantaloupe soup. Um, so you can really kind of make those nice. Um, or a vichyssoise. Uh, vichyssoise is a cold potato leek soup. Uh, that's a very classical uh, French soup. Uh, so, you know, you have those. Now, when you're looking at your clear soups, you have your broth as a base. Um, so think of uh, chicken noodle, minestrone, um, anything that it's a clear broth. Uh, think of miso, like a miso soup if you go to a Japanese restaurant. Um, you know, so so that's that's your clear soups, all right? It's a broth based. Um, everything else, the noodles, the chicken, um, the vegetables, those are garnishes uh, when you look at a soup. So, and then you have a consomme, a consomme. So, um, let's kind of we're going to talk about starting a consomme. So, 
usually a consomme you can use chicken stock you can use veal stock you can you can do any kind of consomme um i love a good chicken consomme uh and i've played with it a many times i've done a, a lemon chicken consomme um you, i've done um like a lemon basil consomme so it's just kind of adding other ingredients but your basic consomme is this so you're taking a cloudy stock and you're making it clear and you're using a raft okay so a raft um it's the clarification process it's your clear meat um is going to be a mixture of egg whites um which has albumin protein in it that helps in the clarification process you have lean ground meat um, you can use ground chicken, you can use ground beef, um, it doesn't matter, ground turkey, uh, I've used all of it, uh, but you want it to be lean, you don't want it to be really fatty because the end result is clear and fat free, all right, so I have my egg whites, my, I have my, my meat, I have my mirepoix, which is going to give me my aromatic, I have my um, acid, which I usually will use a tomato, a little bit of tomato paste, um, or you can use like lemon juice or something like that um, and then or wine um, and your herbs okay so you what you do is you take this and you take the lean ground meat you add your egg whites um, and your egg whites act as a binder it's what's going to hold this together when you're cooking this um, think of meatloaf if you will all right so you have lean, you have your lean ground meat, your egg whites, your acid, and your mirepoix, and your herbs. So the mirepoix, it doesn't matter how it's cut, but I want it really fine. I want it really small um, so I can get those aromatics out of there quickly. Um, and so what you do is you get a bowl and you mix all this together, right? And you pour it into cold chicken stock. And so again, you're starting everything cold. And what's going to happen is it's all going to come up to temperature at the same time and so a couple temperatures and we'll go through this when you come to class uh the the thing that i need you to understand what happens is is my my meat is all mixed together into my stock this raft is all mixed together okay and as it slowly comes up to temperature at about 150 degrees you'll start to see a little bit of steam in your pot all right uh, and that's when you stop stirring. And this thing, I, I'm going to literally sit and I'm going to stir because I don't want anything to stick to the bottom and burn. Now, I'm on a medium heat, so I don't want it to um, stick. And so I stir it because I want the movement. And at about 150 degrees, once I start to see a little bit of steam, uh, what happens is at 160 degrees, my raft rises. And so everything rises to the top and all of a sudden... I have this, this kind of meatloaf, um, this kind of filter at the top where it, I want it to simmer. And I'll let it simmer at 185 degrees. And the simmering keeps it sitting on top. And what it does is it filters my stock. And so the albumin in your protein and the egg whites and the lean meat, what that does is it helps clarify it. So I love using a cloudy stock because all of a sudden it's crystal clear. It looks like a cup of tea. And so it sits there and what happens is my impurities get pushed to the top. They come up and it gets, it, my raft catches it. All right. So my raft, my raft catches it and it's just kind of sitting on top. Um, and I make a little well and that's where I skim this out. So, and then I let it cook until I really kind of can taste that flavor. Um, and it's not, you know, the students are like, it tastes like broth. Um, and it does, but it, it's a technique that if you know it, um, you'll do very well with it. Um, and then you season it with a little bit of salt and that's it. And the biggest thing and the hardest thing of this is making sure that you don't break the raft. And that's why I make my well and I ladle out of there. All right. Um, so that is a consomme, and then you, you, you strain it off, uh, and you strain it through a chinois with cheesecloth and coffee filter three times each. Uh, and so it's clear. It's cl crystal, crystal clear. Um, but it's one of my favorite, favorite soups. You'll see me when you guys make it. I'll come in, I'll be like, where's the consomme? And I'll have a, me a cup, and I'll be drinking it, okay? Because I love it. I love a consomme. Um, but it's a technique that you definitely have to know. Um, and you got to know the different components of it, okay? Uh, so that's how you make a consomme. Um, 
we have the ingredients, right? The, the temperature's for you, strain it through the cheesecloth. And then you're gonna have a um, garnish. Now the garnish is the name of the consomme. So if you do a consomme brunoise, uh, it's brunoise vegetables. Um, and that's what you guys will do. We'll have you do a brunoise of carrot uh, and you'll have to boil them. Now again, it needs to be clear and fat free. All right, so clear and fat free is our end result and you season it with salt. And back in the day, they used to, they used this, um, you know, Escoffier and, and Creme, they used this to, they, they would add uh, gelatin and aspic to it um, and they would use it on aspic platters and, and kind of have a flavored jello, if you will, and put vegetables in it and, and their galantines that you guys will make when you're in Garmage. Um, and their terrines. So um, it's very good uh, and used. You don't see it used as much. Uh, I made consommes when I was in hotels. I would make them for my uh, specialty uh, menus. If I had a six course meal, I would always put a consomme in there because it was light, it was flavorful, and it kind of broke things up and it wasn't very filling because it's a broth. Okay, so, uh, but I always used it on, on a course menu. So it, it's very good. Uh, all right, so then you have your cream soup. So usually your cream soups are thickened with a roux. All right, so you're always going to have some sort of roux. And here you're probably using a constant, you're using a compound roux, all right, where you're going to saute. If I'm doing a cream of mushroom soup, I'm going to sweat my onions, my mushrooms, my garlic. I'm going to sweat all that. I'm going to saute that up in a little bit of fat, right? I'm going to dust with flour, sage, right? I'm going to dust it with flour and then I'm gonna let that cook. I'm gonna add in my stock, and boom, now I just thickened my stock with my roux, bring it to a simmer, finish, and I pull in my immersion blender, zing, 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 which is my favorite tool, zing, puree it up, add me some heavy cream, add me some herbs, add me some seasoning, and boom, you have a cream of mushroom soup, okay? Uh, and you know what? And that's, that's what the compound roux is. And that's a cream soup. That's kind of a base of how I do a cream of asparagus soup, a butternut squash, you know, anything that I do, it's, it's kind of, it's like that. Um, so that's your cream soups. Um, love it. You can, again, you're using, uh, a, you can make a bechamel and kind of go from there or, uh, it's stock and cream. So either one. So. Uh, but it's just kind of understanding the technique, if you will. Um, as I said, a velouté is, is a base a lot of the time for the pureed soups. Um, you guys will do a cream of broccoli when you guys are in class. Uh, one thing you want to be really careful of is whenever you're making a soup, you don't want it to curdle. Um, cream can curdle. I've had it curdle on me just a couple of times. Um, so you, you want to be, you want to make sure it's heat sensitive. I will tell you this, milk is a lot more heat sensitive than cream. All right, because the cream has the fat in it, uh, so it's not going to break down on you, okay? Um, and so it's not as heat sensitive, but milk, you boil it, it will curdle sooner or later. Um, it will just literally separate. You'll see it. It's nasty. Um, so don't ever boil, and you can burn it. Uh, pureed soups, you're always using your immersion blender, um, and your main ingredient is usually maybe going to thicken it. So um, usually, like if I'm using a starchy, like if I'm making a uh, potato soup, um, I'm not going to add a starch to I'm not going to add a roux because my potatoes will thicken it. If I do like a butternut squash or a sweet potato, I'm not going to use a starch because they're starchy and when you puree it, it thickens. So you don't have to worry about that. So, which is nice. Um, and other soups, you got the chowders, the bis. Um, and you can see with, with your garnishes, you want to have a little bit of garnish. A garnish is just an accent, all right? It's nothing. You don't want to have your garnish that covers up the bowl. You want to show off your soup, all right? So when you guys start, uh, especially when you get into this class, you're going to start presenting the soups to us um, so we can taste them. Uh, and you want to present them and have a garnish with them. The garnish should be edible. All right, you don't want to use a cinnamon stick. Uh, you don't want to use a dried bay leaf. You want to use something that's edible. If I do a butternut squash soup, I usually will do some caramelized apples because I took some apples and pureed it into my soup. Um, so I always try to use whatever's in that soup as a garnish. Uh, so it will accent it. Uh, so you always got to like that. Uh, bisques are generally with uh, crustaceans, which is your shellfish, okay? 
we're gonna make a lobster stock, uh, and then you'll use that for your base of your shrimp bisque, which I love a good shrimp bisque. It's one of my favorite soups. Um, and if it's done correctly, it's really, really good. Um, so you never know from that. 